Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome, Christopher, Avni, Salomi. Thank you for joining in. Uh, it's uh, good to have you on this uh, call. We'll pray and get started. I know uh, other students are not yet here, but uh, hopefully they'll join. So let's let's just begin. Uh, could one of you please lead in prayer? I'll pray, ma'am. Yes, yes, sir. Father God, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for your promises that we stand upon. We thank you for the word that we are about to learn, Father. We thank you for your beautiful plans that you have for each of us, for which you are preparing us, Father. We bless our teachers. We bless Pastor Nancy. We bless all the students who are here, Father, who are learning, who are seeking your truth. And Father, let your truth reign in each of us, Father. That's what we pray. Help us to be wise enough to apply all the words in our life and walk in victory and be blessed in every area of our life, knowing that you are the Lord of our lives and you are in control, Lord Father, of our lives. When we give you control, Lord Father, lead us and help us to do your will, Father. And, and Father, in everything, we give you glory, honor and praise for you deserve all the glory, honor and praise. Bless each one of us and lead each one of us. Let everything be done according to thine wills. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Abhi. Uh, so in the last class, we were talking about uh, keeping things in order as far as uh, uh, planting. Once you plant the church, we talked about how the legal things should be in its place, the financial, um, uh, you know, uh, whatever accounting and things it has to be in order because uh, all of this will help us uh, you know not just to to serve uh, spiritually but also you know in accordance with the law of the land so i was telling us uh, that we must keep uh, proper accounts and then i I was just saying that it's important for us to have a separate bank account. Uh, why is this uh, necessary? Because uh, if we don't do that, then what happens is there can be a lot of confusion. Okay, so the money that comes in, uh, if it goes into the the uh, pastor's account, you know, and then the accounting is done that way, uh, it, you know, you would understand, you know, the income tax return and so many things. So everything sort of gets mixed up and confusing, uh, and uh, it will be a lot wiser uh, of the pastor to actually have a separate account. Uh, and also, uh, we talked about how. Uh, every place has a law and it requires for the registration of the church so that is also something uh, one must look into uh, it, you know almost immediately that would help so you you see whether you can form a trust uh, here in india i think you cannot register uh, as a church but you can register as a society or a trust uh, that's that's what we understand uh, and you could as a religious trust and then you could uh, function under that there are certain rules that come in because a religious trust uh, does not file income tax so uh, you would you would need to uh, apply for a tax exemption and the government allows that for all religious trusts so you would need to uh, apply for that uh, and then uh, that way when you account uh, for your uh, church activity related uh, uh, you know uh, money and all that you don't have to pay a tax on it okay so uh, these are all the le legal aspects these are all the the guidelines given by the government so everyone i know there are people from other countries as well in this course so uh, we need to find out what does our a law of the land say and accordingly plan the legal aspects plan the financial aspects and uh, uh, also some practical things that we said was uh, uh, try not to be hasty when it comes to spending. Uh, it would be good to start off small uh, in that, you know, you may want to look out for a place that is uh, not very expensive in terms of rentals. You could start off there. And, you know, so as you start growing, you would uh, have a slightly better income. 
at that point you may want to find a larger hall or you may want to buy a better mic system you may want to uh, you know do up the place so uh, be wise sometimes what happens because we are so enthusiastic and then we uh, uh, may also say that by faith you know i'm doing it by faith yeah it's true if the lord leads you and you're very very keen and clear on it then uh, there are steps that one can take by faith but uh, not to get into unavoidable debts okay unfortunately pastors tend to do that sometimes they just take a huge loan and get into a big uh, crusade or something or uh, you know get a huge place and they're not able to pay for it and uh, uh, there's a lot of pressure you know, as it is ministry can can take up a lot of uh, uh, your uh, mental uh, engagement and emotional strength now imagine if you have an unmanageable debt also along with taking care of the ministry it can become very difficult so these are all very practical things and we talked about having a budget okay uh, if there is a budget i'm breaking it down so that when uh, as and when yeah you know different ones of us we are getting into this uh, church planting uh, we we will know how to do these things so budgeting might mean that you know you set aside money for all the church activities that you think are necessary for example sunday services could be one budget head you may have missions that can be another budget head now uh, all the other activities maybe you want to allocate some money for the youth activities so that could be one budget head so like that we have uh, different heads and in that all the costs that come in you uh, sort of you decide okay i can only afford to spend uh, so much money for the hall of sunday service so we budget those things but uh, along with budgeting the expenses it's also very very important to budget so plan out the savings so from the beginning let's say i'm uh, just giving an example let's say our income is 10 rupees now i cannot plan to spend all 10 rupees i would need to plan to save some amount of money maybe i think okay let me spend 7 rupees and i will keep 3 rupees so if we plan that way you know we are saving up as we are doing church uh, and maybe we come to a, a point in our doing the church that hey i have 100 rupees in my savings so uh, i can now move to a better hall uh, and i'm not under debt when i'm doing that so you know these are some practical things for pastors uh, and uh, not to worry about what will others say um, you know uh, if if i do it uh, in this particular place so just be led by god don't be uh, under pressure to appear uh, you know large or fancy or you know anything like that because uh, we are building this work as god is leading us and surely you know we we know that our god is a god of increase he will bless us he will uh, lift us up he will you know cause that abundance to to come in uh, in the ministry but uh, you know jesus spoke so much about managing money isn't it uh, uh, so we cannot waste money or you know manage it in a in a very uh, um, uh, careless way because it it puts us in trouble so if you can manage uh, our expenses and uh, also make provision for savings that will be a huge help in the ministry and uh, when it comes to maintaining accounts um here in india if when you are a trust you, know, you have certain obligations you have to do the account accounting engage you know um, an accountant chartered accountant and then uh, annually they would want you to uh, report so we have to um, uh, you know we have to work on these things and uh, maintain you know our accounts regularly so these are all obligations uh, for the not just the government said but even um our own understanding sometimes what happens you know we might think that uh, uh, oh we are doing spiritual work why is all this important i'm not going to get into this uh, but also uh, just to encourage all of us there's a lot of help available um, even in you if you say rural areas or remote areas 
you can find people who can help you do your accounting you can find people who can guide you on you know the legal aspects uh, there are networks uh, uh, even earlier i shared about you know uh, a network of uh, lawyers who are ready to help if if uh, pastors want knowledge on on various matters so help is available you know it's not the question of help and today uh, more than ever we are very well connected so we can get all the help that we we need uh, but one needs to uh, be determined to do these things and keep everything in order okay so legal financial obligations there is a list over here i will just read it out for the benefit of those who are uh, only listening uh, to what i'm speaking today um, so uh, apply for a permanent account number uh, apply for a tax account number this is once you register your religious trust uh, then uh, register under section 12a mm, this is for it exemption or income tax exemption uh, from the commissioner then register for professional tax if applicable register under the religious places registration the minutes of the meetings of the trustees must be recorded and filed the regular statutory audits must be carried out okay sorry for that yeah uh, the necessary taxes must be filed okay so we listed it out but um, uh, we would also need to check uh, any updated guidelines or rules of the government and uh, you could consult with with the trusted lawyer and they will keep us updated on all these matters okay so another very practical aspect here is uh, to have things in writing okay uh, this is um, with regard to any um, any uh, deals for example property you know a property owner some sometimes people could come up to us and say okay why don't you use our place and place to uh, so i mean initially it all sounds very good now they might say okay it actually costs um, 10 rupees but i will give you um, this place for 2 rupees and we we jump with joy oh excellent uh, this is uh, really suiting our budget but what happens in the long run is we really never know uh, if the uh, if you know the agreement might change for whatever reason just imagine with me uh, the church is running and a lot of people start coming and there's no parking in that area so you know people end up parking all over the street and the person who gave us the place is upset about it now they might say okay you know what from now onwards uh, not 2 rupees why don't you pay me 6 rupees and then suddenly you're like but you said 2 rupees now you made it 6 rupees you know so a lot of these the, the agreement between people verbally can change over time i'm not saying it always changes but what if it does okay it sours uh, relationships with people so a good thing we can do is to have um, all these agreements when it comes to property when it comes to vendors right we just be very professional if you can have things written out you have contracts you have agreements to rental agreement uh, even till date when uh, when we do things we make sure when you are taking up a place we have a proper rental agreement signed by the parties uh, uh, concerned so nothing is done um, you know in a in a uh, okay we agreed verbally uh, let's go ahead with it because it's a little bit of a risk there you know and uh, it might strain relationships so as far as possible put everything in written agreements mm. don't go purely based on someone's word because situations might change their word might change so this is a little bit uh, about how to get organized as a local church now um i'll give us a, a few minutes to kind of quickly um, ask any questions or you know have your inputs on this and then we will proceed we have other chapters i'm going to try to um just share the highlights um uh, because we have touched on the coming subjects earlier you know it's about city wide church and it's about small groups uh, we've already um, looked at all that in detail so i'm just going to look at the highlights and keep going on and hopefully we can finish 
the the portions today so any questions any um, inputs uh, we talked about the legal and the financial aspects right of organizing a church so yeah Okay, I think when uh, uh, one comes close to planting a church, you probably might look into these things um, in a more detailed way. Uh, but you can always come back. Those of us in India, you can always come back to these pages that we looked at just now. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it gives you all the necessary uh, steps for, for you to, it's like a checklist. So you can tick it off and say, okay, you know, I've done this, I've done this. And it will be really, really helpful. So even recently, you know, with certain incidents happening across the country, pastors are required. They don't, they don't have a registration. If they don't have the permission of the local um, authority to run the church, uh, they get into trouble. Okay, um, and uh, it's unfortunate. Some may not know. Uh, they are just being led uh, by God and doing the spiritual work, but when something happens um, and the pastor is questioned you know how come you're, you're running this church who gave you the permission mm, they don't have an answer but then it becomes so difficult even if you engage uh, lawyers and, and uh, you know uh, people who can help uh, they are also unable to do anything because here's a pastor who does not have you know any any permission no registration you know, and, and uh, now what can one do to get this pastor up? Uh, so, you know, these are all the practical things and uh, we can't be ignorant uh, about, you know, the legal and the financial aspects. So um, be aware of these things and you could also share if you come across a pastor who is uh, planting a church, maybe you can recommend this book. You can also tell them, hey, there is a checklist. Why don't you see that you know you've done all these things it will be really helpful as you grow your church so uh, that's uh, about getting organized financially legally mm. now coming to organizing of small groups you know we have uh, seen how small groups are uh, important they really help us to live out the the uh, teachings you know that we we have the church uh, we could every sunday we could be listening to sermons uh, but then when we come to a small group there will be life to life interact life to life um, you know uh, impact there'll be interaction uh, we we can actually see how to apply whatever we have heard in the sunday sermon so smaller groups are very very helpful and uh, we've said earlier that there are some churches that have thrive because of uh, these uh, small groups for example the the uh, church in uh, seoul korea right you're the full gospel assembly uh, uh, by david young cho now uh, the kind of groups that we want to have it can depend on what that particular pastor prefers uh, so here are some examples from uh, apc small groups are uh, one is life groups okay life groups were earlier known as cell groups but you know cell sounds more like prison so that's why we changed it to uh, like a lively name uh, of uh, life group Whereas cell groups, understandable, right? Cell, tissue, uh, organs. So uh, the way the body is formed and the smallest unit is cell. So that's what we meant. But but still, you know, I think life groups is a lot better. And life group is uh, a common term these days. Most churches use life group uh, in comparison to cell group. So these life groups are places for fellowship, for discipleship, um, and, uh, you know, uh, one can grow in these in these uh, life groups uh, also there's some called as alpha groups alpha groups are more of uh, uh, people now in the alpha groups they are like the initial groups where you may not have 
all as believers maybe there are some seekers some who are still um, you know yet to make their decision for christ but alpha groups are those those starting points where um, a non believer can feel comfortable and ask all their questions and uh, hopefully you know they they will make that decision for christ so the purpose of the alpha group is more winning souls okay and nurturing the new believers so these are the two kinds of groups that uh, we have here um, life groups can be uh, based on any pattern that we that we prefer you know the g12 model is what we use here g12 model was used uh, in um, uh, caesar castellino's church in uh, colombia so uh, that became very famous so uh, the the model there was that a uh, leader starts a group and the group grows to 12 members and the moment the group grows to 12 members uh, they they split or they they multiply so it becomes more than 12 you try to start another group with the help of a leader who was prepared in this uh you know original group uh, and in that way you know to kind of start multiplying you know you, it's it's like that whole um, you know cascade effect you have lots and lots of uh, uh life groups uh, which which will happen as soon as one life group touches 12 you know they multiply so something like that mm. so that was the original intent but uh, you know even right now uh, we are we kind of uh, working on the same model but there are some modifications here and there based on the context of our city and the the uh, you know the schedule of people in our city and all that because we can't do it exactly the way it is done uh, in, in some other city so uh, the g12 model is what we we follow the pattern of the life group it's uh, quite simple so basically what happens is every uh, life group leader will review the sunday sermon okay the sunday sermon and if you all have noticed in our sermon um, draft uh, towards the end of the sermon there is the life group um, uh, you know the the life group guide there you have some questions you have certain highlighted scriptures and all uh, so the life group leader he can use that he can just use he or she can use that leave the group typically it would last for about one or one and a half hours and it's totally the discretion of the the life group leader whether they want to serve snacks or they want to serve a meal whatever they are they can do you know sometimes family life groups they have a meal together uh, but you know it, that may not be possible for uh, Uh, you know a life group of the youth or you know some professionals they might want to meet quickly over tea and then wrap it up so it's totally up to them and again how often would they like to meet that's up to the discretion of the life group leader uh, uh, also uh, what time uh, so here uh, we we've seen that uh, people meet um like family life groups generally their timing is like 7 pm and all but youth life groups also have a timing of 9 pm because you know they prefer to finish their work and then uh, get together sometimes they stay on you know 9 to 11 and all young people can do that so uh, it depends on the uh, kind of life group so we have here based on um your ages we have here based on uh, you know it, it can also be based on interests people's interests right so uh, a group that is um, you know they're very very interested in workplace ministry or they're interested in something else so you can also form a group i remember once uh, one of our uh, life groups right now uh, that life group leader i mean he's married and he runs more of a family life group but initially like when he wasn't married uh, college days or something he uh, used to have a life group on the basketball court so uh, it, young people would come they would all play a, a game of basketball and just have the group there so uh, things like that you you one can know what works for the uh, people in the church so you have life groups based on that and what are the responsibilities of a life group leader they invite new people there they can be people in church right you see that oh they're not connected to a life group you know encourage them hey why don't you join the group and then they keep in touch with the person through the week now uh, they uh, once people start coming then you have uh, you know some kind of a spiritual oversight uh, 
through the week, call them up, ask them how they're doing, uh, encourage them in their spiritual walk. So basically, development, spiritual development of the people uh, is uh, is the responsibility of the life group leader. Uh, and a life group leader, the task is more of caring for the people. So we would say number care. And also, sometimes, yeah sorry everyone i got logged off uh yeah sure thank you i don't know at what point i got logged off but basically i was saying you know life groups can engage in outreaches they can engage in uh, evangelism and it would be uh, over here we also have a system of uh, reporting so once the life group is held uh, a report comes into uh, the pastoral team uh, on what was done in the life group so it's generally very brief we discussed about this and this and that and you know if there is something that needs immediate attention okay somebody's very sick or uh, you know somebody's in uh, has having difficulty because of so, some issue kind of bring that to the notice of the pastoral team then the pastoral team can engage they can pray for that person or reach out to the person so something like that uh, the reason why the sunday sermon is uh, shared is people can have the you know like something common uh, you know for them to discuss and follow uh, but otherwise earlier i we used to have anyone like the life group leader can share whatever they like uh, but you know eventually what happens is it's it becomes very difficult to keep a tab on who's sharing what and you know uh, are there questions what questions people have how to address those matters you imagine if there are a uh, if there are 20 life groups or 30 life groups every life group leader is doing their own uh, topic it becomes very difficult to kind of you know guide them and lead them so this makes it a lot more easier um, and of course there's always the uh, flexibility for the life group leader to um, bring in something which is relevant for example if it's a women's life group i remember uh, we were discussing about uh, different women in the bible so we would quickly finish off the sunday sermon uh, and you know discuss all that then we also had additionally we we were uh, discussing about the lives of women in the bible so you can have something relevant for your group as well mm, that way you know you're strengthening the the actual need of the people the youth might have something that they really um, passionately want to talk about so we, we could also have another subject so like you could keep the pastoral team informed and then continue with that so things like that um yeah so the uh, beautiful thing about life groups is that people um are able to serve one another uh, they are uh, they grow uh, you know it, it's like uh, if you have successful life groups then uh, a lot of needs are met almost immediately if someone's sick you know because of our relationship with those people uh, we are the first ones to respond yes we can engage uh, other teams in the church and call the pastor and all but that might take some time 
we just step in you know if it's a birthday we we wish and it it's so beautiful to do life together you're connected with people uh, and uh, you know that that um, sort of you know strengthens and also another advantage is that people grow up faster because they are they are connected they are being nurtured uh, in a very individual and a personal way so that's also something really wonderful then uh, multiplication can happen you know because people are nurtured they are growing developing you have more people through more life groups and that way the entire church can uh, mature you know at a faster pace now what are the downsides of uh, having these small groups we've discussed right there is a danger or a risk of cliques or factions you know you you can have a splinter group your the group grows but if uh, let's say life group leader or a couple of people in the life group have um disagreements uh, with the church you know they they want to split and become a church on their own so th is that a risk or a danger yeah definitely you know things like that could happen um uh, but it really depends on how uh, you know oversight is provided and also there can be um we remember we talked about the right kind of community uh christian community should be around uh learning the word and worshiping god and serving god and ministering um, to people ministering to god but if it becomes minus these things we end up being a social club you know just you know, going out for coffee just going out for movies uh, but we are a group from the church but how different are we from uh, people from the world you know i'm not saying that a life group should not go out for coffee yeah of course we can we can spend time but i'm saying the main thing should remain the main thing you know that's what makes it a life group so should not become a social club okay minus god so that's also a risk and we have to um, train the leaders to to maintain that integrity of the life group uh, and then of course um, there can be arguments disputes over matters you know a certain uh, controversies when the leader is sharing on subject maybe somebody brings up uh, uh, an issue and they're unable to resolve it there because the life group leader does not know all, all the answers so these issues might also pop up but if we have a good mechanism we can address it we can also uh, here when we do our we have a training for the life group leaders uh, so when we do the life group leaders training we kind of uh, encourage them to keep away from you know if there's a, something that's going to cause an argument or a dispute you know try not to uh, you know bring up those things and uh, yeah if there are questions of course you know uh, they could also email uh, uh, others pastoral team or somebody else who can actually answer their questions so things like that how to help the life group leader navigate um, uh, smoothly uh, one needs to plan so some examples from here but i'm sure you know every church has their own way of doing life groups and small groups but um, uh, small groups are really really essential and they have a huge impact so any uh, additional thoughts or um, questions about life group if you do have then we can talk about it otherwise we can jump to the next topic here yeah i think we have uh, discussed it earlier so let's move further the next uh, subject here chapter 28 in our notes is about mega church and multi site churches so mega site uh, mega church is uh, one that has a um, population of more than 2000 in a congregation uh, and we've talked about the benefits of a mega church usually it's um, it has um, a large impact okay uh, it's noticed uh, and therefore it can also have a voice in the city it can have a voice in the nation but the challenge of a mega church is the um but if we have life groups even in a mega church we can address that matter uh, so mega churches uh, are good in themselves and uh, you know research has shown that you know mega churches can make a significant difference uh, in the region where they are planted uh, 
and uh, mega churches offer you know uh, multiple options service timings to people language options these days uh, and people are also able to connect online so you know that's that's a uh, that's an advantage uh, and uh, it it can bless the lives of many people so mega churches are good uh, nothing wrong with them and every church if we desire to become a huge church you know, nothing wrong with it because uh, the great commission is for us to impact uh, the nations of the world and for us to grow uh, in fact the the other side of it if we want to remain small and comfortable then something is uh, wrong you know uh, because we are supposed to impact more people uh, if we are believers and we are really disciples of jesus christ so mega churches are actually good uh, uh, however you know recently we've seen that not everybody is able to travel up to the uh, place in a in a city where the church is planted um, so even mega churches i know of mega churches here in bangalore uh, who have started new sites okay and have started you know uh, uh, multiple services at different timings because not everybody is able to come to the um, you know that that original church location where they used to have the services so multi site is sort of emerging multi site simply means uh, in a in a city setting where we have um, satellite campuses okay so satellite campuses is like you have one main main uh, congregation and then you have uh, people gathering wherever uh, you know it's comfortable for them so here in bangalore apc is uh, you know you you all are aware we have north south east west um, uh, along with central so the sermon that goes on is the same so it's like the whole church is being pastored on the same subject okay uh, so the same sermon is taught mm, uh, now many churches in the west uh, i'm sure you're all uh, aware mm, that the sermon uh, it is live streamed okay uh, and uh, the multi site uh, churches the satellite churches will all, will live stream so um, what is this church elevation you know elevation is is a good example uh, of uh, satellite campuses they have that and um, you know they they would have worship in their location or sometimes even the worship is is live stream so everything is happening but uh, people are gathering in these in these uh, other campuses okay uh, but they put a pastor in charge who can oversee the the other aspects like member care life groups um you know uh, different things that concern the people who attend that campus but sunday service as such the teaching as such happens in the main location and they have a really like a splendid uh, uh, media team uh, that that does a you know a wonderful capture of the entire service and it is live streamed uh, and you know people are blessed by it so uh, a lot of churches have this going on right now mm, but here at apc we kind of wanted uh, uh, like a physical pastor to do the sermon another reason being um, that you know it gives opportunity for more people to grow when when there are people on site they are doing the worship they are doing the uh, they are doing the uh, uh, you know preaching of the sermon and all the other activities because there are more opportunities more people step in they volunteer they grow so uh, with that understanding we are not live streaming but you know in the multi site model we we engage volunteers um, and it really uh, you know uh, sort of it, uh, it 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 has worked very well uh, and uh, a lot of people can grow through this so there is um, um, uh, some details are provided here about the multi-site locations uh, and the teams at the multi-site locations it's essentially the same okay so essentially the same teams uh, it's almost like uh, you know it's like that um, of course people are different every church has its own flavor and you would know if you've attended a you know a north church and a south church and a central you'll be like wow they're quite different uh, because of the people who make up the congregation but when it comes to the the uh, 
a structure, the processes, they're almost the same. So you would have the same format. You, know, you go in for a pre-service prayer. Mm, uh, I, we have that in all the locations. In Central, I know uh, currently we haven't started the pre-service prayer, but generally, you know, we have the pre-service prayer and then the you know service. And it's almost the same, like the announcements. When you go in for an APC service, you know like you know what to expect in terms of the format, the kind of volunteer teams that are there, mm, uh, and all of that. So uh, that's how it is planned. Uh, over and above this, over and above this, you know, there are all the other uh, ministries, the weekend schools, the Bible college, kids conference, youth camp, church camp, and you know, there are uh, advertisements. So people from the locations can actually plug in to more than just the Sunday services and the life group. So in this way, you know, people can be nurtured, they can be uh, strengthened, developed. Uh, and yes, there are associate pastors in charge for each location. The spiritual ministry mainly of each location is their responsibility. Uh, as far as APC is concerned, our financial, um, you know, uh, the way we handle the finances is central. So uh, when the money comes in, you know, offerings and all, now we have a method, like we have offering teams in every location and there's a way in which you know it is it is uh, uh, collected and sent to one person in charge in the office who makes sure you know, we have a uh, like we have a uh, time uh, uh, you know like i think it's monday only so the, almost immediately the money goes in everything is total then we have a method like you have to um, put it into the bank so we maintain the accounting in a very proper way from all locations so centrally we we kind of handle the money in this way so I'm just sharing it in detail so that you know anyone who's interested, you kind of know how to actually uh, go about uh, planning multi-site churches um, if you would like to. Okay, and of course, uh, you know other ministries when it comes to missions and all, everything is central. We announce it, uh, and then people sign up. People can sign up from all the locations, uh, but we have one person centrally who coordinates things so um you know when people go out on mission trips you would have somebody from north south here there everywhere uh, but they're all yeah you know prepped for it uh, in the same way and uh, they all uh, you know likely they have a similar mindset because they're coming from the uh, apc setup which is common across all locations so that's how the multi site locations here are managed so i just uh, pause in case you have any comments regarding multi-site churches, mega churches, or if uh, we don't, then we will proceed. Okay, <laughs> I, I think uh, lots of assignments. So it seems like people are all busy thinking about your assignments. And I do understand that. Okay, Abraham has a question. Please, how about the needs of the small church? Uh, is everything provided um, from the main church? Okay, good question. Uh, yes, Abraham. So uh, that's how we we work. Um, we communicate it to the office. And then, you know, we have a and then the office kind of coordinates uh, and addresses the issue so that's how we do it mm. yeah does that answer your question um yes but, yeah, uh, my you know i grew up in a small church where mm. we had the same experience we have to send all the offerings to the main church but mm. at the end of the day uh when it um, we need a venue, we need to buy instruments, the things. We needed an extra money from the people. Mm. So it was very stressful for our pastors. So it was like, uh, these are small churches, they don't have that much faith to give. And the mm. offering that comes in is sent directly to the head office. And there is no support from the head office, except the, uh, the messages they give us and the leaders training will go. But when it comes mm. to buying instrument, I mean, the equipment, welfare, everything has to be handled by the pastor himself. So it was mm. very, so I just want to know that if maybe the main church comes in, maybe like they help you with the venue, there's something they, they come to check, oh, you don't have this, let's help you. But if they leave everything to the small church, then it requires so much faith. Yeah, that is mm. what I said. Yes, yes, yes uh, Abraham, I do understand, you know, that that can be uh, very, very challenging. Uh, but here, thankfully, uh, everything is sent to the to the main church but also from the main church we have 
you know regular support so if it is the venue you know it's paid for uh, instruments the basic setup it's paid for um, uh, and any anything you know over and above if we are asking for something that the other locations don't have but we really need it for our location we just have to justify it as in uh, present the need uh, and if it is you know understood that yeah this is a legitimate need we have to spend towards it yes you know even that is granted so that way the the process here is is quite simple mm. we don't really have to um, you know struggle to get any support in same thing for events we kind of plan our events in fact we plan uh, in the beginning of the year we kind of plan you know what we are going to do for our locations uh, and then uh, even we kind of have an idea okay this event it will take all these resources this kind of cost will go into it uh, and so you know approvals also come in early uh, and and so there's really no problem because we have a process that we follow but uh, what you're saying i think the process needs to be improved abraham like if that pastor can have a conversation with the main uh, pastor and then you know set up um, uh, some course of action that makes things easy i think that will be helpful okay pasta thank you so much thank yeah you. yeah sure yes thank you yeah. good question sorry, okay. sorry pasta i just want to ask ah, yes. abraham yes please yeah go ahead go ahead yeah abraham you said you go to your pastor by the church and you send all the offering to the main branch how do you help your pastor or how do you how the pastor has stayed well <laughs> in our issue then the pastor was just surviving on his own yeah so it was a work of faith so he was just um it was like starting that branch was also from another small church you know what i mean so uh, the pastor of that church said okay since you are having a uh, a cell group here in this district i want to help you so the uh, the pastor that is the immediate pastor was able to give this our young pastor a venue then he left everything for him how to manage everything everything was by him but the offering was not going to the immediate pastor it was going to the main branch i don't know if what i'm saying really makes sense because like we have the main branch and yet we have a sub branch and then we have the last uh, uh i don't know how to say it the 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 last church so let's say we were paid from the main church so in other words if we had issues we were supposed to submit to the uh, our sub church then from the sub church they can take it to the main branch but when it comes to the offering because we have the account already we have to go to the main church and then send the report there but when it came to issues of maybe finances or something you cannot go directly to the main church you have to go to the sub church and we're receiving some support from the sub church but i don't know the day that support was not also coming in so uh, our pastor has to survive i mean it was not easy it was not easy it was not easy at all yeah i don't know whether what i'm saying really makes sense pastor okay uh, it's making sense but uh, i think it's hard to <laughs> is hard for a pastor in such, in such situation thank you yeah yeah this really happened i mean i was part you know i was very close to the pastor so i knew everything that was happening it was tough our pastor did not find it easy at all he did not find it easy at all it was tough yeah 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 that's that's tough uh, abraham um so at least i think like the parent organization can ensure uh, salary or some people call it support uh, which is sent to the pastor or the main overseer of the branch uh, so at least you know like uh, their survival because obviously you know people have families they have to take care of their own personal expenses so that is managed Mm, and then uh, when it comes to the church expenses uh, the way we said you know some support maybe a rental payment or uh, i don't know something else whatever you need like the snacks or your regular uh, uh, costs of of the sunday services there must be some provision uh, given to the uh, local churches because um, otherwise it's it's not fair unless uh, uh, you know one has decided 
that yeah i i mean just think about this if that person is a full time minister and this is all what he does uh, all the income is given to the main branch then where is the additional income for his expenses or his family expenses and the church related expenses you know he'll have to find an other job but that way what's happening is uh, we are actually making it difficult for that minister to serve uh, with with all the available time energy and resources you know that person is not able to commit because now he's also stressed about surviving so yeah that sounds uh, very tough uh, yes pastor pastor I even got to a point that uh, just that we knew our pastor realized that he loved god so most of the mm. things we did not really because he will come to the puppet and he say something like so sit your pastor you know so you realize that the pressure of money became a problem i mean he will instead of maybe giving tithe and offering you say so sit your pastor that was almost part of his, his preaching almost every sunday and then you realize that it even stepped down to i mean forcing people to give to him you know what i mean but just that uh, by god's grace we understood where the error was from so we don't really blame him but some did not understand so most of them must live and all those things but it was really challenging i mean it, the pastor was dedicated to the ministry he didn't have any extra job so he was just living by faith and we were giving the money uh, as offerings to the head church so he would just come to you uh, you know what i mean maybe so seed and then it didn't even come with offering we have to give partnership and all those things and yet uh, the pastor the money was not going to the pastor so the pastor has to devise means you know to say that, okay now so see to your pastor don't so to the church so to me that one so it is really had affected his, his sermon we realized that no this is not good but by god's grace we've been able to stand together and i think he's still doing well even though i'm not there but he's still doing well yeah still doing very well mm. oh, wow <laughs> yeah that's a very different situation that yeah thanks for sharing abraham uh, there's a question here christopher will quickly address this and then we will take a break um how does it work in a network of churches like assemblies of god okay so christopher this is what i've heard about assemblies of god i think in order to belong to the assemblies of god one needs to um one needs to pay the uh, you know that organization a fee so Uh, if i pay uh, and then i become a member of assemblies of god uh, then i have the i can use the name so i can be whatever if i if i want to call myself uh, you know joy assemblies of god uh, bangalore i can become a joy assemblies of god bangalore uh, but i think the finances are the responsibility of the local church so the income that comes in i manage um you know i have my trust everything uh, so i don't really have to give it to the the main office this is my understanding of of the process anybody here from assemblies of god would you know yeah this is this is what i have uh, learned uh, and that's how uh, i think it works christopher yeah sure All right, so uh, let's go for a break, class. Let's. Uh, oh, okay, Shri Kumar is saying they support the pastors also, um, but Shri Kumar, would you know if they they support all pastors? I don't think so. So the pastors who are in need, actually, especially mm. the pastors who are in need, not the mm. mega church. So the mm. pastors who are really in need, like uh, you know, the small small churches where they are struggling. Mm. so what i heard is that they also help them to set up the church and also um to set up a church they need a minimum number of people to start and yes absolutely they have some uh, legal formalities and all so after that uh, um like um initially they support the pastors also to to work to grow the church so as the church grows i don't know that whether they will pay the salaries or not but uh, yeah there is a initially they used to do it that is something they were they were working in the past but at this point of time i don't know how it is working but yeah uh, as per my knowledge it is it is it is like it is like that only like they they support the pastors and also they help to set up the church uh, whatever instruments and all initially they will do it so yeah that was the, that was their way of working in the past thank you pastor okay 
yeah yeah thank you thank you shri kumar for sharing that information i i think that's right yeah even i've heard uh, some pastors in the north uh, they told me that for a couple of years assemblies of god was supporting them so i think they they helped them launch uh, if they are a small church and they support them for a while and then the expectation is that they'll become self sufficient and then the support is sort of cut off so yeah i think that also is there all right okay fine class let's let's go for a break uh, we'll come back at 10:05 and uh, continue with the rest of the chapters and hopefully we can complete today yeah thank you